Okay. Hi, my name is Darian. Welcome to my channel! Um, I don't know what I'm doing, but we're gonna try this. So, I've been thinking of starting a channel for a while, and I just never really did it. If I look over here, I'm really sorry. I'm very distracted. I've never filmed myself, so I'm gonna have to get used to this. Yeah, I've been thinking of starting a channel for a while, and I've just been too scared, and I've been thinking of excuses, and now there's not really a good excuse because we're all at home, and all of a sudden yesterday I got the motivation to start this channel. So we'll see if this becomes more than one video, or if I just give up after this. Okay, so, um, like I said, my name is Darian. I am going to be talking about books. If you don't like books, then I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's what, that's what I'm here for. So, I have always loved reading. Reading has always been a huge part of my life. Throughout elementary school and high school, I was always reading. I would read before school, during school, after school, before bed, like literally all the time. And then for some reason when I was in like, well when I was around, when I graduated high school basically, when I was around 17, I just kind of got into this huge reading slump for like four years. During that four year period I think I read maybe like six books total. And for some reason I just, I didn't, it's not that I fell out of love with reading, I just couldn't bring myself to read. So those were the dark days, but now all of a sudden last year my like passion for reading just kind of came back and I started reading a lot again and then I discovered booktube and I followed lots of booktubers and I followed people on Twitter and Instagram who post about books and now I'm fully back into reading. I'm going to try <laughs> to keep up with this channel and post about books do my best. Um, if I seem nervous, it's because I am, because I've never done anything like this before. So bear with me. If I actually manage to make more than one video, I'm sure the first few videos are going to be interesting. <laughs> so today um, my plan is to talk about what I read in April. Um, also a disclaimer, a lot of uh, booktubers that I watch and that exist I know a lot of people read like 15, 20 books per month. That's not what I do. I read five books last month and that's a good month for me. Like five books, that's pretty good for me. So if you're looking for someone who reads like 10 to 20 books per month, you're not going to find that here unless I read like a bunch of graphic novels or something. But anyways, I read five books last month and I participated in The Owls which is a readathon hosted by G from from Book Roast. Um, if you don't know what that is, I'm going to try <laughs> to link her channel below if I figure out how to do that. I'm assuming it's easy, but we'll see how that turns out. So if not, just search up Book Roast and she's amazing. I love her. Anyways, um, yeah, so she hosts this readathon. It's uh, inspired by the owls exams from Harry Potter and it's so cool and imaginative and I just love it. So I participated this year for the first time and I read five books, like I said. The career that I was going for was The Trader of Magical Tomes. So for that career you only had to read four books but I added a fifth one because for the owls you can take these like seminars. So I also did the, I think it's the Mer People Linguistics, something like that. So I added a fifth class so I read five books. So I'm gonna go through them. So the first book I read in April is Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Oseman. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody on booktube knows what this book is, but if you don't, it is a graphic novel with adorable drawings, and they're drawn by Alice Oseman herself. And it's about these two boys in high school, uh, Nick and Charlie. I always get them mixed up, but I believe Nick is uh, openly gay and Charlie is kind of your typical jock. Um, he's big and he plays football so yeah. He thinks he's straight, everyone thinks he's straight and then uh, Nick and Charlie form this friendship and Nick develops feelings for Charlie 
and Charlie thinks he might be developing feelings for Nick, and but he's not sure what's going on because he never thought he was gay, and I mean, I'm sure you can figure out what happens from there, but it's so, it's so cute. Um, it definitely lived up to the hype for me. One of the, one of the comments I've seen from this book is that it's really juvenile, which it is because it takes place in high school and it's very much like, you know, when you have a high school crush, you kind of, it's all you think about, you kind of want to throw up all the time, you analyze every single thing that they said, like that's what this book is and it's just so cute and I give it five stars because it's, oh, it made me so happy and it's a really quick, quick read and I think that you can even read it for free on Alice Oseman's website, I think, so you have no excuse not to read it. I definitely recommend it and hopefully I can pick up volume 2 soon and then volume 3 which I don't have yet but I will get on that. I forgot to say uh, Heartstopper I read for for Ancient Runes the prompt was to read a book with heart in the title or a picture of a heart on the cover so obviously Heartstopper that's why I read. So the next book I read was Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. This book is the sequel to Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This is a duology, um, so these are the only two books in the series. I And I read Muse of Nightmares for the Merpeople Linguistics, was, which was to read a uh, book for Herbology, and the prompt was to read a book that starts with M. So obviously that works. So Strange the Dreamer is about this boy named Laszlo, and he's obsessed with this lost city of Weep and he's kind of an outcast, he doesn't really have any friends, and then he maybe gets the opportunity to travel to Weep himself, and I don't want to say much more than that because just the experience of discovering this world was just so amazing and magical. I read Strange the Dreamer in um, March, by the way, so I read Muse of Nightmare soon after I read Strange the Dreamer, and this is my new favorite book of all time. I was obsessed. I love this book so much. Um, it's just so whimsical and Lainey Taylor's writing is just so like delicious basically. Like that's the best word I can think of to describe it. It's just so like it just pulls you in and I cannot recommend this book enough. It's a fantasy book obviously so if you like fantasy you will love this book I think. And Muse of Nightmares I liked just as much as Strange the Dreamer. I think I mean, maybe I would say I like Strange Dreamer more just because it's the first one. It was my first experience in the world, but Muse of Nightmares was just so good. It was such a good follow-up. It takes place right after Strange the Dreamer finishes off, and it was amazing. Like, it was everything I could have asked for the conclusion to the series, even though I secretly wish uh, maybe she'll release another one, but I don't know if that's going to happen. But I really recommend this duology um, and I gave this five stars. I gave both of those five stars obviously but yeah my new favorite series of all time. I love it. Um, yes. <laughs> so the next book I read was Sadie by Courtney Summers. I always get her and Courtney Stevens mixed up but this is by Courtney Summers. Oh god this is so washed out. <sighs> you can barely see it with my door. I'm sorry about that. Here. Ta-da! Okay. Anyway, so this was for Charms, which was to read a book with white on the cover, and obviously <laughs> this book is very white. So Sadie follows um, a girl named Sadie, and her sister was recently murdered, and they never found who killed her. So Sadie takes it upon herself to um, find who did this to her sister. So my camera stopped recording for some reason, so if the angle is a little bit different, that's why. Um, but I think I was saying that... This book follows Sadie who is trying to find her sister's killer and so it's following Sadie's um, journey but it's also following this podcast who is um, they're trying to figure out where Sadie is gone because she's gone missing and so they're trying to find Sadie and Sadie's trying to find whoever killed her sister and this was a really good mystery. I've heard a lot about this book too so you probably already knew what this book was. It's really popular on booktube. I've heard a lot about the audiobook that apparently the audiobook is amazing with the podcast aspect. I didn't have access to the audiobook. I only have the physical book so um I'd be interested to see what the audiobook is like, if I would like it any better than I did, 
than reading it physically. I really liked this book. Um, I thought it, Sadie was a really interesting character. She has a stutter, which I don't think I've ever read a book with a character with a stutter, so I thought that was represented well. I mean, I can't really speak, but from what I can tell it was represented well. And yeah, I thought it was really interesting. I was really intrigued. I gave it four stars and apparently you should read the audiobook. So one day maybe I will. <laughs> so the next book I read was A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. I think that's how you say her name. I read this book for History of Magic, which was to read a book with a witch or wizard in it. I'm pretty sure this counts because there's the enchantress who puts a spell on the beast. So I think it counts. So this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, so we have the Beauty and the Beast. We have this girl Harper who has cerebral palsy and she kind of falls into this world of um, the Beast, which is, his name is Ren, and he takes a human form, well he is a human, and every single season he is cursed to either find a girl to love him or he turns into this beast. And the difference between this and the Disney movie is that when he's in the beast form, he cannot control what he does. He kind of just blacks out and the beast takes control and he kind of goes on just like a killing rampage. So he's killed lots of people. <laughs> it's actually his, in this book, it's actually his last season. So Harper is his last chance to break this curse. And I've heard a lot of mixed things about this book. I've heard that it's really good. I've heard some people say it's really boring. So I didn't really know what to expect when I went into it. Um, I thought maybe I would think it's cute or like I would have fun with it, but it wouldn't be more than a four star. But I was so pleasantly surprised with this book. I ended up giving it five stars because I just like, I was so engrossed in the story and I was just rooting for Harper and Wren and there's also another character named Grey who I loved. Like I've heard the next book is basically about Grey which I'm so excited to read about because he's one of my favorite side characters I've ever read. I love him so much and I think the cerebral palsy rep was represented well. I, again I can't speak for that but um, I thought it was really interesting and yeah I really loved this book. I gave it five stars. And the last book I read in April was A Big Boy. It was House of Earth and Blood, or Crescent City as I like to call it because it's written way bigger than the actual title, but anyways. So House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. Um, this is she thick. Like, this book is 800 pages. I wasn't sure I would finish it in time actually, but I finished it on the last day of April so I was able to complete my owls. I read this book for Transfiguration, which was to read a book with shape-shifting in it, and I mean this book has every single mythical creature you could imagine, so there were definitely shapeshifters, there were werewolves and other kind of shifters in this book, so I was good. This book follows this girl named Bryce. And I don't want to say too much about what happens because I think it's better not knowing a lot but basically she kind of suffers a really traumatic event and the book is her dealing with that and also trying to solve this mystery that happened a few years ago with the help of this angel named Hunt. This is only the second book I've ever read from Sarah J Mass. I read Throne of Glass only like a month and a half ago. I didn't read that series when everyone else did in like 2012. I read it, I read the first book um, last month and I actually really enjoyed it. Like was the writing the best? Maybe not. But the story was super fun so I was really excited to read this book especially because it got so many good reviews. So when I read this book I was kind of, it took me a really long time to get into it. Like the first half of the book I liked it but I didn't, I didn't feel, I never felt compelled to pick it up. Like every time I was thinking of like April ending soon and finishing my owls. I was like, oh, I have to read Crescent City, as I will call it. <laughs> it was kind of a chore to get through like the first half. And then all of a sudden, like at the halfway point, the book just like, it just became amazing. Like the, the ending of this book is one of the best endings I've ever read. It was so engrossing and I... Like, I read the last 300 pages in two days, which is a lot for me. I never do that. So I was obsessed with the ending of this book and a lot of the things that were revealed at the end, uh, at the ending of this book 
I thought made the first half of the book better and I'm interested to see if I ever reread this, which I don't know if I will because it's ginormous, but um, if I ever reread this, if I end up liking the first half better because of what I know from the ending of the book. So I ended up giving this four stars because the first half of the book I would say was three stars and the second half was five stars, so that only seemed fair to see, give it five, um, four stars. But yeah, I really, really, really ended up liking this book. I thought her uh, Sarah J Mass's writing really improved since Throne of Glass and I'm really excited to read the um, second book in the series and I'd also like to continue reading the Throne of Glass series. So yeah, those are the books I read in April. Um, I'm sorry if I stuttered or seem nervous again <laughs> while I'm filming this. Like I said, I've never done anything like this before. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I'll do this again. <laughs> Hopefully I will. Um, this was fun, so um, if anyone is watching, um, give this a like and subscribe, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'll try to link my Goodreads down below if I can figure that out. And I'm also going to try to figure out how to make a thumbnail. So if the thumbnail for this video is really ugly, again, I don't know what I'm doing, but thank you for watching this video. If you are watching, <laughs> it's so weird to think that someone would be watching this. But anyways, if you watch this video, thank you so much. Um, I will try to make another video soon. I don't know what it will be, but yeah, okay. Um, I feel like I forgot something, but yeah, anyways, thanks. Um, I'll see you with another video, hopefully. Bye!